All right, so what I want to go over today is a quick and easy way to process some HDR images without um, needing to buy any more software than you may already have, such as, I mean, the only requirements for this, you have Lightroom and Photoshop, and I believe it's Photoshop CS5 and above that'll have this feature to create what's called a 32-bit HDR image. Um, typically, I mean, you'll take these three images with the differing exposures and combine them with a program such as Photomatix or HDR HDRFX, uh, something of that nature. But what we're going to do on these is combine these three images into one file without having to use one of those other programs, just with what's built into Lightroom and Photoshop. And to start out, I'm going to show you the initial setup that we've got here and some of the limitations. And granted, when you're shooting with raw files, you do get all of the information in there, so you do have a lot of leeway to play around with you know, exposure settings and, and that type of stuff as compared to shooting in JPEG format. But you'll see over here in the exposure slider, if you bring it all the way down, we have five stops down and five stops up or overexposure. So keep that in mind as we go through processing this. Alright, so what we're first going to do is we have again our three images right here. I'm going to highlight all of those and if you right click you'll get up your contextual menu and you have an edit in. Um, the option you're looking for here is this merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. Uh, this would be the same setting you'd use if you're going to actually create and tone map the image in Photoshop, although this time we're not actually going to be doing the tone mapping. So you can go through, again, if you just right click, you'll get that edit in menu, or leave, you can come up to, if I can find it here, go under the photo menu, and edit in is that same exact menu. So either way that works best for you. So let's do that. Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. And this may take just a, a minute or two as it uh, loads up all three of the images and basically combines them in a very similar way as to what Photomatix or HDRFX or any of those other HDR programs would typically tend to do. And you'll see it's it's working away in the background and it should pull up here a different screen as in this one right here the merge to HDR Pro screen and you'll notice there's your final image there's your three images you started with right there and then up in the top right you'll have a few different options here I think that and this granted it may I think the first time if you go into this it may default to a 16-bit or an 18-bit image and give you all of these other options right here but the first thing you want to do is under the mode, click that, let's change it to a 32-bit. And you'll see all of those options are pretty much gone. And next thing you'll notice, you'll see this right here, it says complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw. That is basically to complete the tone mapping process in Adobe Camera Raw, but we're not actually going to be tone mapping this within Photoshop or Camera Raw, so make sure you uncheck that. Because if it's checked, you'll see this that says Tone and ACR. Uncheck that, and you'll get the option of just OK. Uh, the other thing you will notice here is the slider. This slider will basically show you every bit of data that is now going to be held inside the one file. So you can see you slide it all the way, you're going to pretty much overexpose everything and then underexpose the majority of it. It doesn't really matter where you leave this, it's pretty much just so you can see everything that's in the one file. So let's leave it about right there. And the last option I like to check, especially if you have any possibility of moving objects, is the remove ghosts. So if you click on that, you will now get the option where you can select any of your images in here to choose the one with the least amount of ghosting. So you'll see in this right here, we actually got fairly clean um, 
leaves in the trees. And you can see the flag right there is a very small one to watch. And if you switch over to the next image, you'll see your leaves are blurring a little bit. Flag still fairly crisp, so that's not bad. Then we go on the final one. And you'll also see again these leaves blurred out. So overall, it looks like the first image is probably going to be our best option. So we'll click on that and hit OK. What this is going to do is create that 32-bit HDR file. This will take just a few seconds here. And it should open up the file back in Photoshop. Which there is our file right there. And you'll see it looks a little bit different. Don't worry about that. That's perfectly normal. So at this point, what you want to do is come up, do File, Save, or if you're on a Mac, Command S, uh, Windows Machine, Control S, save this. See your saving percentage right there. And now we can jump back into Lightroom. And you will see your image right here. This, again, you have your first three. And you'll notice this right there. It's going to create a TIFF file as in a 32-bit TIFF file is what we just created. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that as yellow so I know it's different than the other ones. And you're, not, you're probably going to be seeing, you know, this image is really dark, what did it do, what's the point of all of that? The point that we want to see here is over in your exposure. Before we had the minus 5 and plus 5 um, options as far as the exposure settings. Now you'll see we can go down to minus 10 or plus 10. So you've got an additional five stops under exposure, five stops over exposure, which this file now contains every last bit of that information. So just a quick little plan around. We can drop her highlights down here a little bit, bring up some of the shadows if you want, drop that. We can play around with our white, set our white point, set the black point here and you can see now you have these three images all combined into this one file at which point we can pull out all the highlight detail all of the shadow detail and end up with a fairly decent image with just a little bit of a little bit of playing around with it so far um, again, this is a pretty simple way to create some HDR images. It'll save you a lot of the extra noise that Photomatix and the other HDR programs cause. And you'll end up with overall a lot cleaner images than what you would with any of those other programs. So I hope you try it out and have fun creating some HDR images with, with just Lightroom and Photoshop.